Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. We are in Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania, as you saw, and we're going to get inside to Plains Antiques. I'm excited to get back in here. Let's get inside and see what we can find. Here we go, guys. Alrighty guys, we're going to take a quick overview here of the front window. They have clearly got that phone number posted there, but again, the down in the description, you are going to find uh, the street address and phone number again. So check that out. All right, we've obviously headed on the interior. We're just going to check some stuff out here, give a quick overview. We're on the hunt for who knows what. You never know what you'll find. You just got to keep an open mind. That's right, Dr. Seuss. Watch out, I'm coming for you. Oh, that autograph book, but it's 22. Uh, we have some vintage jewelry here. Not bad. I will say it looks a little more contemporary than what I am on the hunt for. Uh, prices are really good, though. I just don't, again, because it's a newer piece, don't see a whole lot of room on that. This piece is quite the sparkler. Alrighty. So again, if you've never seen it before, you get it. And I, I really love this. It's priced at $38. Um, which I think is a deal. Now, upon first inspection, I couldn't quite figure out how one would have displayed this. Um, there is like some markings down here, the patent dates on it. I was trying to figure it out. We've got Mother of Pearl uh, in there. Ultimately, what I decided is that it is missing its wood frame, uh, but still a really unique piece. So I did leave that one there. <sighs> Look at this. Look, it is an Art Nouveau. It's a figural lamp finial. She's priced at $28, but I did get her for 50% off or $14. Heck yes. Uh, like I said, it's the first time seeing this, so definitely want to pick it up. Alrighty, guys. We're obviously headed into a different part of the antique mall. Obviously, we're still here in the front, so we're just going to kind of peruse around, see if we can't find anything. We're going to enjoy the ride. I didn't really see anything there, though I do spot this very mod, very 60s, 70s, this little bar set here. I uh, don't know that it is or if it's just in the styling. Obviously, it's a little large for shipping, so we're going to leave that there. <laughs> Moving on into one of the uh, main portions of the building here. We've got a whole lot of glassware. I did spot that red bohemian. Um, now, it's generically called Bohemian with the painting on there. Uh, and Murano, the glass, um, did make those coming out of Italy, Czechoslovakian. Um, so very common for both. I do think that's more of a contemporary Murano piece. I'm more interested in the antiques. Cute little powder dish there for $14.50. Not bad. Mm. We got a whole basket of noisemakers here. Clowns up there on top. Look at that old rug beater. That wicker one. Now I did spot this clock over here. The vendor has it marked as Bakelite. I don't know that it is. It is harder acrylic. I did not do the sniff test on it. $52. It is an electric clock, but unfortunately the cord has been cut. So we're going to leave that one behind. Just checking it all out. There is stuff everywhere, top to bottom, so you definitely have to take your time. Don't really spot anything. There's even vintage electronics in here. That's cool to see. Now, up next, I do spot this beautiful lamp here. Pardon me, chandelier. Priced at 180 I think it's a pretty good deal. The thing that really caught my attention were these two swag lamps um, or lights. I love the very Art Deco glass feel to it, though we have a little bit more of a Baroque uh, finishing up on the top. I think those are beautiful. They're elegant. I think that they can definitely go into a modern decor, though, too. Those would be great if you put like an Edison bulb in there or a flicker to kind of mimic like a gas. Interesting piece. A little disturbing, not going to lie. I did pick up that tag. So we go from 
high-end lighting to super kitschy Anna Lee dolls here, priced at $89. I know that might be shocking for some, but those vintage Anna Lees, they've got some great value on them, so never turn it up. Keep your eye out for the tags. Those usually have the dates. Anna Lee's very good about putting on the date. Ooh, look at those antlers up there. Interesting piece here. We've got a wall-mounted uh, bell. It's quite elaborate. I love uh, the finishing touch here of the woman with wings on the front. They have it as a they have it as a mosaic bell. I don't know if it is or not, but it's really cool. I know that. I did spot some kits. We've got some new old stock here, little ornaments. They're all clowns. I wasn't overly thrilled with them. Thought I'd take a look. You never know, right? You never know until you look. And moving right along. <laughs> Brass ears, motor implements, miner's lamp. Little mantiques here for you, but nothing really caught my fancy. Sure didn't. This did catch my fancy. Look at this clock, not the Annalee. But I love the dichotomy here. We've got this gorgeous cherub. Um, mantle clock, or pardon me, desk clock here. It's priced at $85. There is some splitting to the pot metal. Uh, unfortunately, the clock isn't, it, it's present. The glass insert is obviously still there, but when you go to wind it, the entire thing just kind of spins. So beautiful to see, but we're definitely going to have to to leave that piece there. It was a little bit pricey. Um, frankly, if I were to have gotten it, I would have gotten it for my personal collection. Clowns everywhere. This interesting little laboratory scale. I don't know, is it me or am I the only one that looks at these antique measuring or electronic and I think immediately I'm gonna get electrocuted? This is really cool. I actually had just saw one of these on eBay and I was considering getting it. This one's only $100. I love the fact that it's got the candles on there. I think that could be quite striking. Um, especially if you're into the religious iconography, I, I was really digging that. Um, I didn't like the fact that the figures were so bright. Ooh, this piece is amazing. I absolutely love it with those round prisms in there. I'm not digging the, um, the bulbs that they use, but that's an easy fix. Interesting. We've got a little bit of a Regency slash mid-century combination there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some Fiesta wear here. Not my biggest thing on the show. There's even clothing there. Just not spotting a whole lot, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Oh! To Smokey the Bear. Now, he is adorable. He's in really good condition. Obviously, he's missing his hat. He is priced at $125. Jeez, Smokey. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to leave him behind. Mm -hmm. Let me stay there. He's some pretty Roseville, but just not really... I don't know. I really love the, the Roseville, but it's just... It doesn't do that well. I love this lamp. This red satin glass here, very Moulin Rouge, if you will. We've got a Bradley Hubbard there, 375, going right on it. Again, something that I would get. I actually just got a refurbished. You know, uh, it's wired, but it's all white. I'll have to take a picture and post it on Instagram. Very pretty. We've got blue vase. It's called Alba. I've never heard of them before. I really love the blue with the silver overlay. It did run some comps on it, but unfortunately, they don't really go for a whole lot. We have some lovely chandeliers here. This one I really love. Ooh. Imagine sitting at the dinner table and looking up at that. I think it's quite striking. Not the biggest fan. It's a little more contemporary with that bright, shiny gold. I would prefer it to have a little bit of the patina. But that's an overall aesthetic. Some Roseville. Ooh, I did see it. Uh, this plaster frame back here. Um, I didn't like the subject matter. That's not to say that you wouldn't be able to take it out. But the thing with it is, is that subject matter read a little too contemporary for me. This is amazing. 
So we do have a uh, ceramic or porcelain plate that has been um, framed. They have the plate as marked as Germany. I love this frame. I'm not digging the fairy with the frame. I think it needs something a little bit more impactful. I think a navy white and gold would be amazing in there. Um, though I do love the plate by itself, just not that combination. Here we had a great sale. Um, I'll take 60% off any day of the week. Um, I didn't really spot anything there in the jewelry. We've got a few things here, obviously, that are outside of the cabinet. Nothing really was catching my eye. Now, I did see these... Um, Oh, yes, this planter with that navy, very Majolica. It, it reminded me of early Roseville. Um, but the thing that really caught my eye were these serving pieces. More specifically was this Marigold Carnival glass, the punch bowl set. This one's priced at $900. Even with the 60% off, that's a little beyond my reach. This is actually would be a gift for somebody. And we, we uh, Richard and I, recently found a complete set for $125. So it didn't beat that. But I'm on the hunt to see if I can't get a better deal. Lots of wall art here. There we go. This is an example of the piece that we saw earlier. Now, I do think the piece that we saw earlier would have been in a uh, a wooden frame versus the metal frame. I could be wrong, but then it finally dawned on me that's what was going on with that, that uh, glass picture up front. Got a little frame here, or yeah, frame, album. <laughs> Now, there are some photos in there, which uh, the condition is kind of iffy on this one. That would be more for a collector who could appreciate it, just given the condition, not enough room uh, there to make a whole lot of profit. Now, we have moved on into the land of cases, you guys. There's quite a few here. Um, give you a little bit of an angle. You can kind of see me glancing. There were some folks down there, so I didn't want to really capture them. Oh, uh, sir. He's blurry. You can't see him anyhow. So we're going to check out the cases and see if we can't find anything. Not really spotting anything, to be honest with you. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you see something. Okay, now this willow uh, flower frog. I love this, this flag, this fly. They did like crabs and crustaceans and it's the, the muscat, M-U-S-K-A-T collection. They're usually really pricey. So at $65, it's pretty typical. Uh, we are down here towards the end and we're going to loop around and go back up the other side of the cases. But I did want to give everybody a fair shake and definitely want to check it out. Again, keeping that open mind. You never know what you'll find and you'll find nothing if you don't explore every nook and cranny. Definitely not here for the Hot Wheels. Though there is some really good value on those. Boyd's Bears, but none of the tinies. I like the tiny Boyd's Bears. Those can, I mean, my goodness. Definitely check it out. This piece is really interesting right here, you guys. It says that it's a canary cage for a miner. I think it's actually a reproduction. Um, I just, I don't know. The, the patina, if you will, seems a little manufactured. Um, but it's still cool to see. Can you just imagine literally having a bird in a cage to make sure you stay alive? Oh, this piece caught my eye. Look at this amazing Nippon. It is in a Moriyagi or slip work. It is highly detailed. It is very ornate. And it was at $85. And I was like, oh, $85. Look at these beautiful serving sets. Look at this picture back here. Again, that speaking of that uh, navy gold and cream, um, it's a beautiful look to it sale was 25% off. And I thought, well, at $85, 25% off, that is a definite get. It's a very high end sophisticated. It is quite elegant. I wanted to get a closer inspection on it. Unfortunately, you can see there's chipping around the rim and there's a pretty substantial chunk missing there out of the flute. That was heartbreaking. Um, but again, for the right collector who wouldn't mind that, you know, you turn it around and it's what damage, you know? Moving on, going to kind of check things out. Not really spotting a whole lot. Mm, yeah, no. 
I like the little terrain here. I mean, there was just such sophistication and elegance back in the day. You know, there was literally a serving utensil for every single thing that you could eat. Mm, yeah, just not spotting anything, you guys. I don't know. It's going to be one of those days, maybe. And you know what? That's okay. We're here for the experience. I will say this, though, too, is... You know, I know it's difficult for everybody out there in this economy, so I am trying to be highly selective of the items that I purchase. We've got a little Canadian pottery company here, Blue Mountain. He's priced at $25, which is very reasonable. There unfortunately was no sale. Um, I like the subject matter. I've never seen an elephant before, but at $25, I did leave it behind. This cute little armaloo here, little jewelry casket. $45. That's actually <laughs> one of the cheapest. Now, this is more of a contemporary. It is not an antique piece. You have, do have to be careful. A lot of times you'll see here, like those bottoms are glued in. So if you put too much pressure, you can pop the bottom off and risk damaging it. Um, but again, uh, you know, it really is about being very conscious of the external factors uh, that are going on in the world. I know groceries plays a huge role in it. So I'm always very conscientious of that. There are things that I think have a higher value if they're one of a kind, they're highly unique, they're very sought after, they're in pristine condition. That warrants maybe paying up a little bit more. But on those kind of questionable items, it really is about getting that item as low of a cost that you can to try to generate that profit. We saw that uh, cranberry and clear glass Fenton fairy lamp with a hand painting. It's very Victorian-esque, but it's like that 70s, 80s throwback to the Victorian. And I've got to tell you, I'm not... The cranberry and clear with that Mary Gregory, it is such a specific look. Um, and at $55, again, if it was like $20 to $25, it would have been a get. But at $55, I don't think that there's enough meat on the bone on that. Here we've got a beautiful picture with the silver plating. I wasn't overly sold on the floral detailing on this one. It almost had like a pebble effect then to the, the uh, flower petals and leaves. $24, not bad. Um, it would make a beautiful floral vase, I will say that. So we've got a lot of the geisha wear there. I'm not, eh, we even have neon, but again, I'm just not feeling it. It's, it's, I want those unique things and it is, it can make, especially if you're reselling a much more difficult experience because you don't want to go in and think, oh, well, this is vintage. Therefore it's valuable. That's just simply not the case. Um, they really have to have a good aesthetic value. Um, I think it's something that people need to connect with. I think as adults, we can really appreciate um, it evoking a feeling of nostalgia, um, you know, being younger. And was it your parents? Was it something that you had and played with? Was it something your grandparents had? That really speaks to the item. And of course, a label can certainly make a difference. But again, you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. Just because it has a well-known or desired label, if it just doesn't have that feeling, that look to it, if it's kind of one of those eh kind of items, then it doesn't matter what the label says. But again, it could be a simple made in Japan piece, but there's just something so aesthetically appealing to it. That's what's going to sell the items. Here we've got another interesting, it says early soldier. I was actually really tempted by this one, he seems to be a Union soldier, um, and I love the frame on it. But again, subject matter was really specific. Imagine cooking on that beast. Now, here we've got some more primitive style stuff. It's typically not the stuff that I really go for, though I will say I'm trying to broaden my horizons. I think that there is something to be said for more of the primitive or early Americana. Um, kind of that rustic charm to it. I think those pieces can be mixed into a more sophisticated or elegant, but still giving you just a little bit of a rustic or natural vibe, I think can really help kind of soften a space up. And I don't really spot anything. It, it's, it's cool to see, but the items are so large. Creeper. 
Yeah, you better look the other way, sir. Moving right along here. Again, just large items. I mean, I could do it, but again, looking at, you know, external factors, shipping is a cost in consideration for the purchase of an item. You know, you go on eBay and there could be a beautiful lamp that you do want. Maybe the lamp is $250 and you think, hey, that's a great deal. And then you look at the shipping and the shipping is $125. That $250 lamp is now $375. Little contemporary glass candelabra here at $395. Got a Swedish glass owl here. He's cute. Ten dollars. Uh, I've seen those a couple of times. These are really charming. Um, Graham glass. They're hollow on the interior, so it's not really speaking to a quality piece of glass. These were really interesting. Now the tipping point was Francoma. Francoma has a very specific look um, and a glaze style to it. The prairie green back here. Uh, obviously, they are stamped, so that does make identifying them a little bit easier. These are great, very mid-century looks to them. Um, I like that base, almost a pitcher, if you will. You've got like a little console bowl here, um, priced at 25 That's not the worst. I just, the color is not my favorite. This sculpt I absolutely love, um, priced at $20. I did run a quick comp on it, and it's easy to look these up because you have the mold mark, Francoma 302. $20, that's about the going rate. It is, of course, a votive candle candle holder. But I again, if I what drew me to the piece was the movement in the sculpt. These are fantastic. It looks like it's a weekly periodical for a family Bible. Now it's not exclusive to any family. You could certainly subscribe to this. It is illustrated. It's got some beautiful engravings in there. Um, and they were very proud to let you know that it, they were steel engraving. So the images have a tendency to come out a little bit sharper versus the wood blocks. Um, that's where you're getting the very fine lines in them. Overall, good condition. There was not a price on these. Uh, the interesting thing was is that the vendor was actually here and saw me looking at them. Now, there is a total of 39 uh, ports to this. Uh, what is it? Oh, the quantity and quality complete. Oh, I thought it was saying weekly or monthly on there, but it's not. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't complete. He initially came in at three fifty for all thirty nine, um, you know, and then he came down to three hundred. Being that there's thirty nine of them, I think that's fantastic. But the reality of it is, is that is there going to be somebody that wants to spend, you know, twenty five dollars per issue and not have the complete then be so inspired to try to get them all. Um, so I just didn't really see that as feasible. I think that it is a really good deal. But again, that decision making really boiled down to then I'm going to have to part them out, lot them out. And I just don't know how desirable a portion of the Bible would be, though it is really cool. And I do appreciate him coming down on the price. Oh, I spotted something down here. We're going to get these old knees of working. <laughs> these really mid-century. Um, these are Italian glass little decanters here. I love how they sit on the side, but 380 we can't do. Alrighty, guys, we're going to head upstairs and see if we can't find anything there. A quick panorama here for you. Then we're going to dive in a little bit closer. We've got some smalls in here, um, very bohemian, if you will, or more specifically, the quote-unquote eclectic look. Just not my vibe, not the stuff that I'm looking for. Some Tiffany-style lamps, but definitely more contemporary. Some large furniture pieces. No, not for us. Beautiful Roseville. Again, I really enjoy this arts and crafts style to it. I like the cream lines with a little bit of a hallmark to an Art Nouveau, specifically the full detailing on them. I wanted to get in here a little bit closer and check out the pieces. This vendor obviously has a flair for the mid-century. All of the serving, of course, your barware there. Overall, great vibe. 
Um, they definitely set it up like you're walking into somebody's living room, and I can most certainly appreciate that. I think it makes for a fun buying experience. Unfortunately, I'm just not finding anything for resale. Those lamps are pretty groovy, man. And look at that. We've got some more Roseville. 275. You know, it's really interesting. I try to sell Roseville and I never get those kind of prices, so I don't know. These were absolutely lovely. I love these. Can't you just see these in the 20s and 30s? We did have a set of three as well as an additional one here. Um, I, I really wanted these. There was no price on them, unfortunately, which was quite sad. Um, oh, I think that they were an overall, this one's flipped around here. There we go. Really good condition, but there's no price. Again, I think that that was something unique. And I think it could have gone into a lot of decor. So I was sad about that one. Just kind of peeking around here. Didn't spot anything. Today is. <laughs> Today is that day. Oh, look at the Hager cat here. Great mid-century sculpt. I think you can lean it into Art Deco. I have said that before, and I'll say it again. You know, to me, mid-century really isn't uh, all that much different from Art Deco. It's just the use of colors and textures. The lines have a tendency to be um, near identical. Not a whole lot um, on that uh, Hager cat. It's pretty much the going rate at 35. So cool to see, but good for a collector. All kinds of goodies, just not the goodies we're looking for. The land of smalls. A little bit of some mid-century glass here, but nothing really standing out. Super special. Some really typical moss bases here. Moving on. Checking stuff out. There is a lot to see. I am seeing a sale sign. Of course, a sale is always going to get you into that booth to make you inspect it a little bit closer. There's even some troll dolls down here. I mean, hey, why not? Not really spotting a whole lot, though. Hmm. Ugh, that lamp. Could you imagine? And people were just like, it's so great. <laughs> I, you know, and I know there are people out there that love that. It's got a very uh, John Waters feel to it. Um, the tackier, the better. Some little donkeys here. Somebody could like them some donkeys. This is a really interesting piece. The little studio art here. Um, obviously, it is an earthenware pottery. They have it marked at $65. There is a, a, a hallmark down here, JJ or TJ, more of a contemporary piece. I absolutely love these colors. Unfortunately, I like the glaze on the interior too. I was not ident be able to identify the specific artist, so I did leave this one behind. I'm just going to take another quick shot here of things. We didn't miss anything. Well, c'est la vie. Our one purchase of the day, you guys, and uh, we're going to wrap it up outside. Here we go. Alrighty guys, well there you have today's shop with me video. I hope that you did have a good time. Again, just trying to give you guys more of an experience um, with a little ambient music. I know we only got one thing today, so I hope you like what we bought, but definitely let me know down in the comments the items you wish I had most picked up today. And until next time guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.